What is that? A set slash 26? Well, that's just the number of bits that are being used in the subnet field. In this case, we have, in our original, 8, 8, 8, which is 24, and then we're using two more in our subnet field, which gives us, hey, 26. And just in case you want to know the technical name for that, it's called the CIDR mask, or the Classless in a Domain Routing Mask. Um, if you might see that as nomenclature and text, etc., etc. This again is just like with the class ranges and stuff that I talked about in the beginning. This is common knowledge, and this is some, this is something that you should just know. Uh, one of the most important things that you should know. In and the next thing that we want to determine is what is the broadcast for this particular subnet. Well, that's really easy when you do it this way. We've already identified what the next subnet's value is, and that's 192.168.1.64. Well, the broadcast of the previous network is going to be one less than the network ID of this network here, subnet number 2. So what is that? Well, it's obvious. 192.168.1.63. And there you have it. We have identified every piece and part of our first subnet that contains at least, at least 50 usable IP addresses without wasting any space. Now, if we would have made our subnet larger, we would have been wasting a little space. Um, if we would have basically moved our subnetting line over to the left, we would have created a larger subnet and we would have been wasting too many addresses because, again, the requirement was only for 50 usable IPs. So there we have it again. We've totally dissected this subnet and gotten everything we can with very minimum effort in writing. So now we can go ahead and move on to the next subnet and figure out everything that we're going to need for that. And it's going to be very simple. So here you go, I've got, went ahead and popped up our other requirements here. Create two subnets that contain 14 usable IP addresses. So we'll go ahead and move on to subnet number two, like we just said, and we're going to create another subnet that contains 14 usable IP addresses. Well, given what we've already done, this should be pretty simple. Basically, just follow the same exact step we followed previously. And that starts with determining how many bits we're going to have in our host field so that we can draw our line in the right spot and identify basically what bits we're going to use for our subnet and what bits we're going to use for our host. So how did we do it before? We added up each value or the value of each bit until we came to a number that contained what we needed. In this case, it's 14. So we have here 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. Hey, we know that's going to be 1 less than 16, right? Does that contain 14? It sure does. 15 is greater than 14. So, we'll go ahead and move our line, the magic line. That means we're going to now have four bits in our host field, and then four bits in our subnet portion. But also take into consideration that we also have to consider the, um, the broadcast, which this 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, that equals 15, but we need to subtract 1 from that to give room for the broadcast. Um, if this said create two subnets that contain 15 usable IP addresses each, we would then have to move our line, because 15 minus 1 is 14, and that's less than 15. So, um, you get the idea there, I'm sure. So what was next? Next is identifying what you're going or what the next available subnet is going to be and how do we do that again you look to the bit value directly to the left of your line in this case it's 16 or you can also just say that that's the last available bit in the subnetting portion in the subnet field so again same thing as before we add this value to the value of the subnet we're working with so 16 plus 64 which gives us 80 so, you guessed it, the next available subnet is going to be 192.168.1.80. And there we have our next subnet, next available subnet, 192.168.1.80. Next thing we need to do is say, hey, what is our broadcast? Or we could say, hey, what is our mask? It doesn't really matter. We have everything pretty much laid out for us, right before our eyes. You just have to look at a couple numbers, add them together, and get your mask, and then find out what's one less than 80 and get your broadcast. So 
Let's go ahead and do that. That's the easiest part. Hey, what's one less than 80? Hey, 79. All right, so that's going to be the broadcast for subnet number two. It's going to be 192.168.1.79. And there we have it, our broadcast, 192.168.1.79. Now, what is going to be our subnet mask? Well, in this case, we add the value of each bit again in our subnet field, just like we did before. 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16, which gives us 240. 240. That means our mask is going to be 255.255.255.240. And there we have it there. Um, and again, this can also be represented by the CIDR, or number of bits that are in the subnet field. As before, we had 26. We have two more now, and that gives us what? 28. So we're finished there, and now we can go ahead and move on to the last subnet. The last subnet is going to be easy to do because we already know that it's going to be the same pretty much as the previous one. The requirements are the same anyway. 14 usable IP addresses each. I mean, it's going to have the same mask, the same CIDR, um, and the same addition to find the next available subnet. Here we're adding 16 again. This time it's adding to 80. So the next available subnet now is going to be 192.168.1.96. So there we have it. Next available, 1.96. Now all we have to do is find our broadcast and then find our um, CIDR and also our subnet mask. They're both one and the same, but you know it. And that's going to be easy because it's exactly the same as the previous. So I'll go ahead and pop all that in there. And so now we have completed the exercise. We've met all the requirements. One thing that I think I failed to mention, but I guess I feel is pretty obvious, is what the actual hosts are in each one of these networks. Let's go to subnet number one. Obviously, we have 192.168.1.1 as being the first usable, and the last usable is 1.62. So everything in that range is the available host address space. And that's you know the same for each additional one. We have here in subnet number two, we have dot sixty-five all the way to dot seventy-eight as a usable address space. Usable host space, I should say. So do we meet all of our requirements? Obviously we did. How about the last one? Do not waste any address space. Well, each one of our subnets is continuous from the previous one. We didn't waste any space in between any of these. So now we have 192.168.1.96 all the way to 192.168.1.255 as usable address space. So I've just laid that out here for us. Obviously the .255 is going to be a broadcast, but I go ahead and just list all the numbers there. 96 all the way to 255 is left over for us to use for anything that we want to in the future. Now, if you're already good at subnetting or you've been using any other method, you may be saying, hey, hey, this, this is just so different, this is just weird. But really it's not, because all you have to know is the value of each bit, and that is the essence of subnetting there. If you know this method, you'll never have any problem subnetting anything. And it does work with the other classes. It works with class B, etc., um, and class A, of course, because it's manipulating each bit value. It never changes. It's exactly what it's meant to do. You're not using any formulas, any trickery. You know you know exactly what you're doing and what you're manipulating, and it's laid out so easily and simply that I, I really believe that this is the best method there is for subnet, the quickest method. Well, actually, the quickest method is probably using a subnet calculator, but, hey, you know what I mean. So with that said, this pretty much wraps up the video. Um, I hope this was informative for you guys, and thank you for viewing.